Alright guys, in this part we're going to start installing the uh, Wideband O2. Uh, so the first step we need to take is taking off the driver's side door sill. Uh, so we'll be removing both the bolts that you see in that picture there. As well as popping all these caps off and taking those bolts as well out to get that sill off. So let's go ahead and move forward. Alright guys, next you have four or five bolts underneath the bottom side here. Uh, once those are pulled out, you should be able to slide this thing off. You're going to probably see a bunch of crap fall out of us out here. It'll wiggle out, you just kind of kind of work with it. You may have to take it out from the front first. And there it is. Now what we'll be doing, you can see that, um, it looks like it needs some new header wrap. Whatever was wrapped around before. Um, that's a B&B &B exhaust there. But I think what we're going to be doing, I don't know for sure, but I was thinking about putting the bung in this area here, since we have clearance. Um, some people use the uh, OEM spot for the original. I was told not to do that, um, but we'll see what we can do. Let's go ahead and move forward. Okay guys, so I went ahead and I uh, drilled a uh, quarter inch and then a half inch hole for our bung here. I went ahead and took a black magic marker to kind of circle around the outside of it to make sure I kept it in the right spot for when I tack it. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and lay a bead of weld all the way around that. Hopefully it turns out alright, I'm not a great welder, but we're going to try that. Um, I made sure to keep it at a little bit of an angle, downward. Uh, the reason why is you don't want moisture building up inside the uh, O2 sensor. So they say 10, a 10 degree, uh, but I think anything that's above 10 degrees is probably good. And you got to make sure you keep clearance for your sill that's going back on top of that as well, considering it's going to come probably way out to here. So let's go ahead and get that thing tacked up and move forward. Alright guys, so there it is. Uh, like I said, I'm a professional welder. Um, it was actually going really well. I actually had a decent beat on it until my uh, cheapo Harbor Freight helmet decided it wasn't going to work halfway between. It kind of goes in and out. Uh, just FYI, I don't suggest buying anything electronic from Harbor Freight. Uh, just like this this case, you know, you're welding and all of a sudden the auto flash stops working and you just, basically you're blinded so you can't see what you're doing. Um, but regardless, it's a... Uh, flux course you're never going to have a perfect weld that's just kind of the way they work um i'm no expert welder but i will tell you if you've never welded before uh, flux core is the easiest um the biggest key that i learned when i'm actually doing a weld is that there's a thing called a puddle and you'll notice when you're welding steel there'll be a big bright red puddle as it starts building up that melted metal you just gotta work it all the way around and keep going keep just basically pushing that puddle around if you do that you'll have a decent weld that's what people call like the stack of dimes or whatever. Um, you'll never have a perfect weld again with flux core because it's gasless. That's the reason it's called flux core. Um, anyways, that's welded in. We're going to go ahead and move forward and start putting some stuff together. All right, there's the uh, sensor inside, guys. Um, we'll have to uh, figure out how we're going to route the wiring. Um, but you can kind of see I've got plenty of room to clear the sill, so we're good there. That's a perfect spot for it. Uh, the manufacturer says to keep 18 inches down from the collector pipe, I think, or the exhaust exit they called it or something um, and if you're running high power turbo applications say 36 inches um, I think that's probably because there was a lot of problems with the Bosch sensors um, and I think with the heat that was basically destroying them um, but from what I hear this is a pretty good spot so that's what I chose but let's go ahead and move forward and start getting some of the stuff installed okay so in this step we're gonna go ahead and start taking apart the dash we are gonna fit the gauge pod itself uh, we're gonna run some of the wiring and figure out how we're gonna get it out through the firewall um, but to start, we're going to have to take out uh, the ashtray here, so we want that out of the way. Uh, this whole thing's got to lift up, it unclips and pops out, you kinda, you'll figure it out how this, this outside lifts up, and then it'll kind of pop out this way. Uh, you'll have to disconnect your window switches and your uh, cigarette lighter uh, adapter here, or charge, or whatever you want to call it. And then what'll end up happening is we're going to pull the whole dash out, back towards us. Uh, so we can expose the gauges. What I'm going to be doing is removing the uh, voltmeter since it's kind of pointless. And I have a heads-up display that shows that to me anyways. So it's irrelevant. Uh, so that's where the wideband AEM gauge will be going. So let's go ahead and move forward and start pulling some of this stuff out. All right. What we're going to do again, we're going to grab the back of this. You'll see it'll pry up. That side will pry up. We're going to be very careful to lift this up and pull backwards. From the left to right, backwards. You'll see everything kind of start to loosen up. It's in there pretty tight on the spot on the left hand side, but it will come out. Again, you just have to pry it. Sometimes you can pull from the top like this. And all we have left 
again is to disconnect our wiring, which you should be able to see is right underneath there. So we've got two plugs here and the wire connectors for, again, our cigarette lighter. Disconnect one, two, and there it is, that one's loose. Now if you can see, um, you can kind of start getting an idea of how our dash is held in. Um, we're gonna go ahead and start removing some of that paneling. I need to get this whole big piece out. It's a little more difficult than it looks because of the steering wheel. You have to drop the steering wheel as far down as you can to try to get the clearance and then move up your mirror as well out of the way. And uh, let's go ahead and move forward and get this thing out. All right, to start, you have some screws you gotta remove. So we're gonna remove these screws here. Um, and there's another screw, I don't know if you can see over there, we've gotta drop this lower panel here in order to get this thing out. So we're gonna go ahead and pull these screws. It's gonna be the same as the other side and drop all the panels uh, and start getting this thing removed. All right, so you do have a screw over here. And you have a bunch of different screws on the lower side here. I know it's kind of dark and hard to see. Uh, but after those are all out, you're going to want to spin this knob out here. And you're going to see this thing drop right down. And there it is. That piece is out now. You can see my uh, OBD connector for my heads-up display. Um, and now you can kind of see some of the screws that, uh, that hold this piece in. So once we expose all those, we'll take those out. And just like I said, this thing will pull right out. Let's go ahead and move forward to the other side. All right, so just a few screws. We dropped the passenger side. Uh, in the same deal, you can kind of see where the screws are, where we have to take them out to get this dash loose. So I'm going to pop those out. We're going to pull this dash out. Like I said, we'll have to drop that uh, steering wheel as much as you can and push your mirror upward. Um, once you do that, this thing should uh, wiggle its way out. All right, guys, so I'm probably not going to be able to do this on camera just because there's no room in this car, and I have it on ultra-wide already. Uh, but you can see start popping it loose popped it loose here loose there of course your button always pops off when you do that there it is there and uh, again the lower your uh, string as much as you can I've got my mirror po pointed upward and we're going to basically pop this back. You can see the whole thing's coming loose. Like I said, I won't be able to do it on camera, but you guys will kind of get the hint as to how you get this thing loose. So let me go ahead and get this thing out. All right, so just before we pop this thing out, I almost forgot. we got to take out our upper and lower shells on our steering columns. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, on the bottom corners, if you can see, there's, there's a T20 Torx bit here and one on the other side over there. Once that is out, all you're going to do is take your uh, adjustment here, and we're going to twist this thing out until it's fully out. This will lift off, and then we'll pull this dash cover out. All right, as you guys can see, uh, the dash is peeled back. It's ready to come out. The only thing that's left to do is disconnect your airbag for the passenger side and the other two connectors right there. And we're going to go ahead, and we're going to pull this straight out of the uh, passenger side. All right, so there you can see all the gauges and how they come out. Obviously, there's two screws that'll pull it out, and then you disconnect. Uh, there's for comparison with the AEM unit. It's a little different, but we're going to try to get it in fit as best as we can, as flush as we can, to make sure it looks kind of factory as much as we can, at least. All right, here it is out. All we got to do is try to pull up on this connector, slide it out. There's our gauge. That's a test fitting. We can get an idea it's kind of the same size here. Uh, a little, little little deeper as far as bezel, but pretty much the same size. So uh, the wiring, there's three wires. I'm going to guess that's a power grounded signal for the uh, voltmeter. So uh, we won't be really using that uh, unless there's an illumination wire, which we may use on this. But this will get mounted inside this bracket right here, as you see. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. We're going to move forward. All right, guys, so here is the gauge mounted in its pod. Let me show you what I did. Uh, first of all, I wanted to make sure that it was the same depth as the other, and of course, naturally it wasn't. And so what I had to do was I spun out the rear brass nuts that normally would hold this in from the backside, so they were halfway exposed. I want to put a washer in there to make up for the difference, and about a quarter inch screw that matched with the lock washer through the back as I tightened it in. So that brought it to space right where it needed to be. It's nice and tight, it doesn't wiggle, doesn't move. So we're going to go ahead and start getting some wiring done to get this thing run and mounted. All right, guys, so as far as wiring, uh, again, we pulled out the gauge. Uh, the wires that you're going to use from this original gauge are going to be the blue and white and the black one. Uh, black with white is the ground. Blue with white is the uh, switch 12-volt power. Um, we are going to splice into those with our red and our black wire on our AEM harness. 
The other blue and white wire on that four pin harness is gonna run out to the floor down here. That is for a data logging, uh, an analog signal. I won't be probably using those, but I'll, that'll be able to be uh, um, getting a hold, got a hold of if, if somebody has to, if I have to data log for uh, dyno tuning or whatever. Anyhow, we got one more harness that's gonna run to the OBD2, I'm sorry, to the uh, um, wideband sensor, and that's actually gonna run. We've separated this here. We're going to run it all the way up back here, down through the bottom and out through the sidewall here. I drilled a uh, one inch, or, sorry, three quarter inch hole saw, um, and we're going to join them there. Uh, so let me get some of these wires run. I'll show you what it looks like when it's all done. All right, so let's recap this wiring, guys. Um, again, we know that the red and the black are powered. They're going right to the old switch. The white and the blue to the four pin prong are going down for OBD data logging later on the road. Uh, the other connector is for, again, the, uh, the uh, wideband sensor, and it's running right behind here. We pulled these screws out. It runs right behind, along down here, down here, if you can see. Uh, and then, I actually, again, I drilled a hole uh, just underneath the main plug input, which I'll show you. Uh, and any excess is wrapped up and zip-tied and stuck up inside here. So let's look up for the outside. <laughs> You see I put a race switch or an on-off switch for storage here years ago, uh, but here's where our plug is. This is the main input plug for the uh, main harness. Uh, one inch drilled hole underneath it, and then I didn't have any um, uh, basically rubber grommets. So what I'm going to use, because I have to reseal the uh, inner trunk still for the gas tank, I'm going to use the same black silicone around the edges. But it has a nice, the connector has a nice flat um, connection in there, and uh, it sits pretty smooth, so I think it's going to do a pretty good job as far as being sealed in. So that's pretty much it for the uh, the gauge. We just got to get it mounted in and the interior put it back together. So let's go ahead and move forward. All right, guys. So there is the gauge mount. Let's go ahead and cycle ignition and see what it does. All right. Looks like everything's working right now. We're good. All right. So we're going to start putting her back together. Let's move forward. All right, guys, so there it is, all installed. It looks fantastic. It, it does make the original gauges look a little duller or yellower. Uh, I don't know if that's just the original color, if they're faded, but um, we got another gauge that's probably gonna be going right here. That's the boost gauge. Um, I'm gonna put it on actually with uh, actually a 3M tape after everything's mounted, uh, just because I don't like the gauge spot there. There's really nowhere else to put it. I did make a mount that would go here in the center console. Um, but I just need to know a boost for consistency. That cheap ass gauge is probably not accurate at all whatsoever. In fact, it looks like it's negative already and it's not even hooked up. Um, but I just need it for consistency. We'll figure out what our boost is when we're doing the dyno, but uh, I want that gauge. So for some reason, if a uh, hose comes loose in the intercooler, then you'll know it. That's the only reason I want it, but I said it may not stay there. So, all right, let's go ahead and move forward. Okay guys, so this is going to wrap up this video. Uh, this is an update a little while later, and what you'll see I have done is I have uh, got rid of that one boost gauge because it was not accurate. Uh, and I actually, I was in a jam, I needed a working one, and I happened to pick up this one from Harbor Freight for like, I don't know, like 15 bucks. And it's surprisingly accurate. Uh, I don't know why or how, but it actually works. Uh, I couldn't find any good reviews off any other ones from Amazon, from Jags, or anywhere. So I just stuck this in, and I'm actually surprisingly happy with it. Uh, but what I didn't show you in the end of this uh, segment that you need to know is that uh, Amazon went ahead and, and stuck me in again and sent me a bad gauge. Uh, I didn't know it after I got everything back together. I uh, went to check everything, and it wasn't working. Couldn't figure out why. Tested the sensor. The sensor was fine. Turned out the gauge was bad, and this is how I figured it out. So when I first turn the car on, it's going to go through cycle. It's going to start sitting at like 14.6, 14.7, it would just stay there. Now if you have a good working gauge, you're going to see it start to lean out just like you're seeing right now. That is a good cycling working gauge. My other one did not. Uh, so that basically concludes it. It is working now and this AEM unit actually does work very well. Um, so, again, that kind of concludes this episode. Uh, if you found it helpful, please throw a thumbs up. Uh, if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe. Uh, a lot of you were asking about some new projects and expectations of what they wanted to see. Uh, we picked one up today. Uh, that won't be shown probably for another few weeks because we still got a bunch of this Viper content I got to get out to you guys first before we start that project. But it is exciting, so tune back in for that. Uh, and if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Thanks for watching.